All right. Thanks so much for the kind introduction. I'm really happy to be here remotely, of course, with you all. Um, and a special thanks to Sandy Captain and Elgin Green Group 350. Um, this project that I'm going to be sharing more about in Elgin is thanks to early support that they shared for community solar and for renewable energy at large. So I'm going to be sharing a bit more about our organization, what we do, the part of the Illinois Shines program that we're in, and how you can benefit to this local Elgin project. But please feel free to ask questions um, in the chat at any time, but I think we'll we'll go over most of the questions at the the end of my, my presentation portion. So for anyone that's not familiar with community solar, oh, I jumped ahead a little bit. Um, we, as the solar developer, apply to the Illinois Power Agency to actually build a project on a commercial or industrial rooftop. So that's the graphic here on the left. Our, our goal as a company is to not take up existing open space and farmland. And this is something um, that was very value aligned with um, Elgin Green Groups that we really want to preserve open space. So if you're used to seeing large solar farms when you're driving um, past large open space that maybe was a former ball field or uh, farmland, we are proud to say that instead of being on the ground, we are on the rooftops of existing buildings. So picture large storage facilities that don't normally utilize a lot of power. And thanks to community solar legislation, they don't actually have to use the power that's generated themselves. We are able to build a large solar farm and produce that excess power to put back out into the grid. And with, the, with these businesses that are hosting the projects on their rooftop, we become a tenant on their rooftop essentially. So we pay an annual lease payment to the host. So then again, the power goes back out to Com Edison, and we have um, interconnection approval and crediting through them to do so. And interested community members, such as yourselves joining this evening, are able to actually remotely subscribe to the project to benefit in the cost savings through the community solar credits. There's many benefits to community solar. Uh, but the main ones, as I mentioned, is that this is local power production. So this project that I'm going to be sharing more about is physically going to be located in Elgin on Big Timber Road, whereas traditional third-party supply that you might be familiar with could be in different parts of the country that you're remotely um, purchasing. And this is different where it's locally generated, which also actually creates new jobs. We have a really robust workforce training program. I'll go into that a bit later. Um, but of course, it, it really helps move the needle in terms of the state reaching their clean energy goals, which helps combat in the fight against climate change. And most importantly, as stated in the title of this webinar, um, it brings cost savings to Illinois households, especially those who otherwise wouldn't be able to, such as renters. And this is a key piece of energy equity, making sure that everyone can participate in the savings associated with solar. So this is not to dissuade anyone who might be considering doing solar on their own rooftop. That is still something you should consider if you have the, the means and your house is suitable. Um, but for those who are not um, able to do solar on their own home or own their own home, community solar is a great alternative for you. So as I mentioned, community solar is a, a key part of the state's clean energy plan. Um, the Future Energy Jobs Act set a goal for 100% renewable energy by 2050. So this Elgin project, while small in comparison to all the projects throughout the state, uh, is, is a small part of that. So it, it does make a difference altogether. But again, community solar as a program was enabled by state legislation. So when we as a, a private entity apply to be within the program, we are selected and approved by the Illinois Power Agency who regulates the Illinois Shines program. There's six project types within the Illinois Shines program, which is the brand name of the adjustable block program and the solar landscape uh, project we have in Elgin that was approved by the Illinois Power Agency is within what's called the community driven community solar category. So what that means uh, by definition is really that it, 
the CDCS program, I'll use that as an acronym so I don't say community uh, 400 times this evening. It aims to have meaningful involvement and provide direct benefits in the communities the projects will serve. So this is a key reason why early on, we were lucky enough to partner with a great local organization and advocate for environmental initiatives like Elgin Green Groups. So we ensure that we're, we're having meaningful impact and able to actually reach, the lo reach local residents like yourselves to participate in the project. And if you're curious within the, the program in Cook and Kane counties, for example, communities defined at the township level in terms of benefits and subscription is actually only eligible for, and we commit to only local subscription at the county level. So that means that our project in Elgin is only, only folks in Kane County can enroll to it, but we wanted to do early education together in partnership with Elgin Green Group so that Elgin residents have the first opportunity to subscribe since it is enrolled to on a first come first serve basis. And I'm actually gonna try to go back a slide the reason that point was important to, to share is you might be familiar with traditional community solar, where if a project is located in ComEd's territory, even if it's two hours from your home, in traditional community solar, you're allowed to enroll for that project. This is where the Elgin project is different in that it's limited to Kane County subscription so that we're ensuring we're trying to meet uh, the local community and make sure that folks that live closest to the project are able to benefit from it first. So as I mentioned before, the Elgin project is located on Big Timber Road. Specifically, it will be built at 665 Big Timber Road on a public storage facility rooftop. Public storage is a really great longstanding real estate partner of ours. As you can imagine, just uh, hosting folks' items does not require a lot of power. So these rooftops were, were really sitting um, untouched in terms of, of solar. So community solar was a great model where they have these rooftops available. We become a tenant on their rooftop and we can produce the power for the community. In terms of this project, there's enough roof space where we designed and had approved a project that will power about 75 households. So it looks like we have six participants tonight. You can be among the very first of the 75 that are enrolled, but I understand this is being recorded. So hopefully we're able to, to reach more folks who may be interested. As I uh, touched upon briefly before, the part of the community-driven community solar program is meant to benefit the local community in more ways than just the energy savings and partnerships. And a key way that we do that is through our workforce program. So we have several programs, including a green ambassador program that we announce annually for high school students. So actually this past year, there was an, a student that won a scholarship by participating in this from LaGrange. So I'd love to see an, an Elgin student participate and be awarded uh, in the coming year. The most recent scholarship winners for the past school year were announced this summer. We also have a uh, hands-on training for adults that are interested in actually having jobs in the solar, solar panel installation field. And that is known as Step Up. The most recent trainings we've done have been based in Chicago and also Harvey. Um, so certainly if anyone joining has workforce it, uh, partners they know of that are interested in our, our trainings, we'd love to discuss that further. And we also have a really popular professional development training for teachers called Train the Trainer. We most recently had a training um, for this with interested teachers at, in uh, Addison at Scarce. So again, oh, this is, a, sorry, I forgot I included the photo here. This is a great highlight um, from that teacher training we did this summer um, in Addison, and teachers were able to take home free classroom toolkits and curriculum so that they could bring that solar education to their classrooms. Whereas the Step Up program, again, is for adults 18 and over who were interested in actually uh, acquiring jobs in this field. And we do that in partnership with local nonprofits and workforce organizations. So in, in Illinois, this is the Better Sister Brother Growth Network pictured here in Harvey, Illinois, Chicago Urban League, and Hacia, just to name a few. Oh, here are some great photos of Hacia and Urban League from trainings this past year. 
Um, actually, this photo on the left is from a HACIA training last summer. And through HACIA, we now know that 70% of the participants in that training cohort last July are now employed in the, the solar industry, which is a really great result because when we do these trainings, we really want to make sure that it's actually leading to to meaningful employment for folks, especially in the solar field would be the most ideal. And now um, to go back to the actual savings benefit part, if you're thinking, okay, this is great. I'm, I'm interested in community solar and would like to learn more about signing up. Um, you can now do so at solarlandscape.com forward slash Illinois forward slash Elgin. And when prompted, um, you could enter invite code EGG350 standing for Elgin Green Group 350. And this is our way to be able to track um, the outreach through our efforts with Elgin Green Groups and be able to further benefit local organizations and nonprofits. So I have a few screenshots in the next few slides to show you what the enrollment process looks like from start to finish. Um, but before I do so, I'd be happy to, to take questions on community solar in general. Um, if that might be of interest to folks. I know I kind of went through this a bit quicker. I'm looking at the chat. I don't see any questions currently, so I'll, I'll go ahead then. So the first page, and I didn't want to navigate to the internet and have it, have it lapse for everyone. So the first page you'll see when you go to solarlandscape.com forward slash Elgin slash Elgin slash Illinois slash, El slash Elgin, um, you'll put in your zip code since we understand folks might be seeing this from uh, municipalities outside of Elgin. Anyone in King County is able to enroll, but hopefully we have Elgin households that do enroll. We start accepting enrollments about six months to a year in advance of when the project is gonna be completed. So construction is beginning soon and we expect that it will be completed in, this winter, 2025. So you'll start to see the credits in the winter or spring if everything's on schedule of 2025. So if you're wondering why it's so um, far out is we have to make sure that we sign folks up before the project is actually connected to the grid and start producing power so that power can be assigned to, to different subscribers within the project. So if you are able to, to sign up soon, you would ensure that you reserve um, your space. Since I mentioned the project is only large enough to, to accommodate about 75 households. I put in my information here as a test to be able to show everyone. So at the this last prompt, it had for invite code. So I put in EGG 350. I entered my test first name, email, mailing address, and I noted that I am not part I do not receive benefits from my heap snap or other federal federal programs. This is always asked so that we can prioritize enrollment for those that are receiving types of assistance, especially energy assistance. And then we ask for the address of the utility account that you're enrolling. So if your mailing address is different than your actual home address, so this is common, especially for for renters who might keep their, their permanent address um, with family as their mailing address and have a separate um, utility account, electric utility account where they live. And then you would enter your Comet Electric Choice ID. This is uh, newer for some folks. So there's a prompt that says, help me find this. It's a number that's different than your traditional Comet account number that's specifically used for community solar enrollments. And then it prompts you to upload a copy of your most recent electric bill, which I, I utilized one here. I was able to connect my utility account. And then the very final step is to review the disclosure form and the actual subscription agreement. Um, and then your space would be reserved on the project. You wouldn't actually start seeing the community solar credit deduction until the project is energized later, the latter half of next year, as I mentioned. But the really exciting news is that um, ComEd has now implemented consolidated billing. So your billing experience won't change. You don't have to enter payment information when you sign up. 
um, you're just indicating to ComEd and to us that you would like to participate in the program. And then ComEd would remit payment to a uh, solar landscape for the discounted community solar portion. This is different than traditional community solar folks that are joining here this evening have, have been subscribed to community solar in the past where it was dual billing. So that is, is being changed and it will be consolidated through ComEd. So again, you stay a ComEd customer and you are able to enroll for this specific Elgin project that is hyperlocal um, by visiting our website forward slash Illinois forward slash Elgin. And I also wanted to, to mention several resources, including the Citizens Utility Board. I actually presented uh, last September, uh, Citizens Utility Board had a great solar overview program with the Gale Borden Library. And I joined at the end to, to introduce community solar and the project we were planning in Elgin. Um, so it's really nice a year later, I can now share that it's ready to sign up, but certainly please, there's always um, review all of Cubs materials and check out the Illinois Shines website if you'd like to. We are listed amongst several offers within the, the Cub uh, Community Solar in Illinois webpage. Um, so please do check us out, but know that this, this project in particular that we wanted to share is because it is located in Elgin. So I now see that there are some questions. I will start with Sandy. Oh, actually, so yes, what can the, I will answer this live. I think I'm doing this right, I clicked that. Sandy asks, what can Cook County people of Elgin do? Cook County people in Elgin can enroll to our project still. Um, but they wouldn't be assigned to the Elgin project since this one is located in Kane County. They would be assigned to a, a Cook County project. Um, and we have many Cook County projects and it would be the same discount rate, which is 20%. To answer Wendy's question, does this affect our rate? Um, it does not. You Unlike third-party energy, it doesn't fluctuate, the 20% community solar discount rate stays constant for the life of the project. So um, to, I think that lends to Angel's question about the usual contract term lengths. The projects are for 15 years, but you can leave the project at, at any time. Um, there's no fee to cancel or to enroll and participate. So you would just email our customer service support or give us a call and we would be able to cancel you. So that's common if folks are moving outside of the, the service area or if um, for, for any other reason, let's say you decide to put solar in your own home and you don't need to participate in, in community solar anymore. I think that was all of the questions, but please, of course, oops. I didn't hit answer live. Okay. If anyone would like me to elaborate further, please do let me know. So I'll, I'll jump back just to reiterate that this project again is gonna start being constructed soon and is expected to be completed and connected to the ComEd grid um, this winter. And then by the spring, hopefully everything will be completed and you would start to see the community solar deduction on your ComEd bill, thanks to consolidated billing. I see another question. Steve asked, can I get a 20% discount of what? My electric bill or the actual bill each month? So it is not on the entirety of your electric bill. It is on, sorry, I was just trying to navigate out of the, the question. It is on the amount of power that's produced that you're subscribed to. So if we're looking at um, this image here on the left, let's say that the Knight household uses about 7,500 kilowatts annually, we would allocate that about that many panels that produce about 7,500 kilowatts annually should be designated for the Knight household account or ComEd account. So 
if it's 20%, and these are very round numbers, and of course it's it's mainly um, just on the, the supply of the electricity, but to share round numbers, let's say that normally your electric bill for your supply portion would note $100, 20%, it would now be $80. Um, I think, sorry, I did have a sample bill on here, but I think that it might not be. So I will stop sharing my screen and try to find that while we wait for any other questions to come in. Um, seeing Sandy's question, can we get a small coverage for the part of our own roof top solar that does not cover in the winter? Um, to my understanding, folks that have solar can't enroll into the community solar program. Um, I think it gets a little complicated with the utilities, but I can certainly um, double check that. So if anyone joining here has their own solar and is interested, I can I can double check with my team. Um, but usually the rule of thumb is most most often the folks that are enrolling and, and the program is designed for is for those who who can't go solar on their own. Um, but I would like to share my screen again. I have here the the website I mentioned, which has a really great robust overview, um, which includes I think this was a prior question from Steve. So the renewable community supply credit on your utility bill is based on the kilowatt hours of energy generated by your share of the solar project and equals a 20% discount off the utility's price to compare per kilowatt. So that's a much uh, more detailed way to, to say what I said, but just so it's, it's super clear for everyone and all. I think um, I dropped this link in the chat as well, um, but I'll, oh, I see another Angel said, we've had a fair amount of storms causing wind property damage in the past few years. What happens in instances when solar panels or the rooftops and equipment get damaged or even destroyed? Um, so that's a great question. And, and one I get often, or even some people ask what, what happens if, if the sun doesn't shine? And that's concerning in itself, of course. Um, but if something were to happen to the solar project itself on, on Big Timber Road, um, let's say um, um, a big wind gust, like you mentioned, we do have them uh, engineered and designed and ballast to be as safe as possible. And we have a fantastic asset management team that's constantly monitoring, monitoring them in real time. Um, but let's say hypothetically, worst case scenario, the, the project didn't produce power one day or for a few months or a year. Um, you would go back to the standard rate you were paying with ComEd if you weren't participating in the program. Um, so you, you're always staying a ComEd customer and it doesn't actually affect our, the community solar project itself on Big Tibber Road. If you subscribe to it, it doesn't actually affect your, your ComEd service whatsoever. It's all done um, remote crediting. So you might not see um, as high of a savings or any savings at all if something happened to the project or the sun stopped shining. Um, but that is, of course, very unlikely. But the the reassuring part is that it wouldn't actually change your ComEd service. These have been some great questions, so please um, continue to ask. And I'll, as we we wait for anyone to think of other questions, I'm going to just go through demonstrating this this web page, which I hope everyone can see. Um, so again, you just need your common account number, your your Clean Choice ID number, that is and be able to share uh, a copy of your ComEd bill via a PDF. So you should be able to download that off of your ComEd account page. And the discount is on the ComEd electricity supply up to 20%. So this, again, as I mentioned, has a really in-depth uh, frequently asked questions in terms of what is community solar, 
how can you be subscribed to this project? Again, if someone is in the Cook County part of Elgin, they would just be assigned to one of our Cook County projects. Um, and you don't need a home to participate. This is open to renters. I myself am a renter um, and I'm enrolled to, to one of our local projects because I otherwise wouldn't be able to put solar on, on the home since I do not own it myself. And this goes a little bit more in depth into Steve's question and about the, the billing. So this is a, a great point that I wanted to highlight further on. Let's say the, the project is completed um, in February or March. It could take one to three billing cycles with ComEd for the credits to begin um, begin showing. So if the project, you're, you could be reserved now for the project and then hopefully by the spring, say April or May, you would actually begin to start seeing those credits. So I know that sounds a bit far off, um, but this is a project that Eldrin Green Group's 350, we first talked about with them back in 2022. It was approved in 2023 by the Illinois Power Agency and it's now under construction. So it's about a two to three year timeline usually from when a project is first started to be planned to approved to actually being enrolled and energized. So it's it's exciting to see this come to fruition in Elgin. Um, so this is the, the first opportunity that we wanted to share with everyone for if they're interested in participating. And this speaks to another question. I think it was Angel's question in the, in the contract length. I know you didn't ask specifically, um, but you may cancel your subscription anytime by calling this number, 888-959-3990 or emailing help at solarlandscape-support.com. And if you do move to another address within Elgin or within Kane County, you'd be able to move your subscription to your new ComEd account, um, but you wouldn't be able to do that if you're moving from Kane County to Cook County. You would have to enroll for one of the Cook County projects, but that would be done automatically um, when you're putting in your, your zip code here, and that's why we, we prompt and ask for it. I see if when the 75 slots fill up, will there be a wait list for future openings? Yes, there definitely will be. And we're we're planning new projects and had additional projects in Kane County approved. Um, for example, we actually also have a project in Aurora that Kane County residents are eligible for. So you would likely be assigned to that Aurora project if the Elgin project fills up. But I was focusing on the Elgin project, of course, with the excitement of it being um, hyperlocal. Another great question. I also um, believe Sadia will be able to share uh, a flyer that I shared um, for all participants after yes, this I, webinar. I so that out to the registrants. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. So I'll. I know I went through everything a bit a bit quicker. I always want to leave plenty of time for for questions, so I'll just share um, my screen of what to expect with this flyer. Whether you would like to share it with your friends or family, um, so we just noted a QR code to our website, and you would be able to enter invite code EGG three fifty, noting the twenty percent discount. Um, and a bit more about how this works. And again, if anyone is interested in our workforce development programs or any other aspects of community solar that I, I brought up, please do um, reach out. I see Sandy's question, when will the recording be available? And can I share that with our EGG list of email folks? Yes, yeah, so actually it should be within a couple of days, Sandy. It'll be on our website and I can email you when it's there and send you a link. Thanks so much.
I also put my uh, email in the chat, which is jschneider at solarlandscape.com. But for, for those who will be just seeing the recording and not the chat, I will um, once again share the the first page of the PowerPoint so everyone can can see. So again, Jay Schneider at solarlandscape.com. I would love to hear from you all if you would like to participate in our workforce training programs or if you have any questions on actually signing up um, and really appreciate your support. And especially thanks again um, to the support of, of Elgin Green Groups for, for all things good for our environment. And that especially means community solar where it can benefit everyone, um, not just those who are able to, to go solar on their own. So thank you again to Elgin Green Groups and please reach out um, with, with any questions.